Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses religious duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah. And joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, we've been talking about ghusl, that's been our discussion, and you've been and you've, we've discussed already the different types of ghusl, the method of ghusl. My question to you is if I performed ghusl, but I have any doubts later on in regards to ghusl. Is it obligatory for me to perform the ghusl again or not? Inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin If the one has a doubt with regard to if he performed the ghusl or not he's not sure um, it happens sometimes uh, the one who becomes obligatory on, upon him to do the ghusl but he goes out shopping, work, study, and so forth. And then he remembers in the middle of the day that did I do the ghusl or not? Uh, in such cases, because he has the doubts with regard to the ghusl, he must do the ghusl. So he goes back home or anywhere else, finds uh, uh, pure water, and he does the ghusl. However, if after performing the ghusl, that's the second scenario, the first one, if there's doubt, then he must do the ghusl. And the second scenario, if he finished doing the ghusl and he came out, and after a while he remembered oh, that there might be something as a doubt, that something uh, has been done or hasn't been done, just a doubt was raised after the ghusl. And if the ghusl was correct or, or, or wrong, because he finished that ghusl, completed the ghusl, and he's now out of the ghusl, uh, the ghusl is tend to be valid and correct. So he, he doesn't have to repeat the ghusl. And that's what is called qa'adatul faragh, is when you have completed something and you have moved to some other tasks and issues, then you don't have to go back and uh, repeat. Uh, repeat because the doubts are not accepted after the, the work or, or that act was completed. So what you're saying is that as long as you have completed the action and you have yaqeen that no, I did do it, not sure if I did it right or not, not sure if it's still valid or not, those doubts can be removed because you have, you, you have yaqeen, you have completed that action. Exactly. There's a certainty before that, there's yaqeen before that, then you stick with the, with the yaqeen that you had and the certainty that you had and just ignore the, the doubts. But if the, uh, from the beginning, um, there was doubt, then you have to repeat the ghusl. Okay, so the ghusl. if there was a doubt whether I did it or not, exactly. then you'd have to repeat it. If exactly. I did the ghusl or not, you have to repeat. I did the ghusl, did I do it right, or is it still valid? You can ignore them doubts, that's not a problem. Exactly. Sheikh, in regards to ghusl, the actual method, um, I mean, is there any mustahabat that, in regards to ghusl? The mustahab with regard to uh, when the one, the individual, discharges his semen um, by the means of intercourse or ejaculation or any means for, the, for that person to be able to um, remove the excess remaining of the semen in that part it's mustahab that he goes to the toilet okay. and relieves himself and if for some case somebody did not do that uh, um, relieving himself after the uh, discharge of semen and afterwards he realizes there's something just um, a, a liquid or a moist just came out from that part and he doesn't know if it's uh, semen or any other liquids then it is deemed to be semen so the advantage of um, going to the toilet after the discharge is that you actually clear the, um, the remaining uh, semen uh, in that part and you don't have to actually do the ghusl again because now the semen has been all removed and taken out so otherwise they have to do the ghusl again Sheikh, now what happens if they, I'm in a situation where I have to perform more than one ghusl let's say uh, I touched a dead body uh, and uh, I fell asleep and I woke up in Janaba and um, it's a Friday, there's a mustahab uh, ghusl to do on Yom al-Jum'ah 
Um, how many ghusls do I have to do? Do I have to perform one per, se per separate incident? Well, basically, you have two options here. You can make one ghusl with the intention of all the ghusls. So in the intention, you bring them up in your mind that this is one, two, three, four. And then you make one ghusl with the intention of all. And that will be, uh, inshallah, uh, accepted and rewarded as well. With regard to the second option, no, you can actually do one ghusl for each separately. So for the janaba, one ghusl. For the Friday, let's say, one ghusl. For the Eid, one ghusl. Although well, they're all one in one day, but you can do the separate. But the easier one is, that, is to so have them it, all together. It depend, it basically, it depends on your niyyah. If you have exactly. a niyyah to cover all of the incidences, exactly. you can do one ghusl to cover everything. Exactly. Um, if you have, and if you want to do a separate niyyah for a separate ghusl, you can do that. What if I, okay, if I was to do the niya for a number of incidences, what is the niya that I have to use? Is it wajib qurbatan illallah or mustahab qurbatan illallah? As I've mentioned that um, always we do the niya of qurbatan Allah ta'ala and getting close and, and near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the main uh, niya that you have to have. So okay. that I do the ghusl qurbatan Allah ta'ala. You don't have to say, you know, wajib or something like that. So it's just the qurbatan Allah ta'ala. But you keep in mind the types of ghusl. So it's also mm -hmm. janaba, ghusl, the Friday, uh, the first day of the month, Eid, and so forth. Sheikh, now what happens uh, if there is an individual who performs ghusl al janaba instead of wudu, which is fine. We understand that ghusl al janaba is one ghusl that actually can override wudu, as in you don't have to perform wudu after. Lakin, what happens if that person wasn't in janub? Instead of doing the wudu, let's say he woke up in the morning, he's not in Janub, but he's having a shower and he thought he thinks to himself, why not I just quickly do a ghusl janaba and that will be instead of my wudu. What does this person have to do in terms of ahkam? With regard to the ghusl janaba, uh, the one must have the situation and, and the case and um, the, um, the hadith. The hadith or the ejaculation of, of the, uh, the semen. So the janaba becomes so wajib on he him. has to qualify for the janaba ghusl exactly. first. Exactly, it has to be uh, achieved. The, mm -hmm. um, the causes, the conditions of the janaba has to be achieved and then you can do the ghusl of janaba. Otherwise, um, if we do with the intention of janaba and, and you're not in the state of janaba, then that's not accepted as the ghusl of janaba and you can't pray. And if you pray, you have to do the qaba or the praise that you prayed uh, with this ghusl. Sheikhna, what's about uh, if someone does a mustahab ghusl, okay, has he um, qualified, is he in the right state to do other things which require a ghusl janaba or wudu? For example, can he touch the Quran, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praise Salah, with a mustahab ghusl? As mentioned previously, the only ghusl that allows the individual to... Uh, perform the salah or touching the Holy Quran or doing the, the tawaf and other wajibat that requires wudu is the ghusl of janabah. So the ghusl of janabah replaces the wudu, the act of wudu. Any other ghusls, be it ghusl of Jum'ah, ghusl of um, Eid, the ghusl of the first day of the month, um, other mustahab ghusl in the month of Ramadan, for, for example, all these ghusls which are desirable and mustahab cannot replace the, the wudu at all. Uh, although, although some ulama, have, they have um, uh, opinion about some of the ghusl that allows it, other than the janaba. But in overall, uh, according to Sayyid Sadiq, he uh, says that the only ghusl is janaba that replaces the wudu, and the mustahab wudu, um, the, mus the mustahab, um, Ghusl won't replace the wudu at all. So if you do a ghusl mustahab, let's say ghusl of Jum'ah, and then you want to touch the Holy Quran, you must make sure that you, do ha you have the wudu on top of the ghusl. So okay. you do the ghusl, you come out, you dry yourself, you do the wudu mm -hmm. as well. And then you can touch the Qur Holy Quran's verses, you can uh, pray, and so forth. So the must mustahab ghusl doesn't suffice as a substitute for wudu. It's only ghusl janaba exactly. which will substitute exactly. for wudu. Exactly. Okay. What about uh, the things that invalidate ghusl? I mean, as wudu, we know, you know, if, if you urinate or you, know, you go to the toilet to relieve yourself or you break wind, um, 
that there's as many other conditions that break wudu. Are these the same for um, ghusl or are they different? And what happens if I if my ghusl breaks? Am I najis now? Do I have to perform ghusl again? Basically, um, if somebody is in the state of ghusl, he's under the shower doing the ghusl of janaba with the intention and everything, and suddenly he feels that he needs to go to the toilet and relieve himself. Uh, they can actually do that, but and then they continue from where they have ended. And left. They left off. Okay. Exactly. And then they, they continue the ghusl. The ghusl would be uh, valid and uh, it won't be batil. Um, because these hadath, like the urine and breaking wind and so forth, won't actually uh, make the ghusl batil. <coughs> what okay. makes it batil, for example, is another hadath, which is uh, ejaculation, for example. Another mm -hmm. ejaculation and... and um, um, let's say the intercourse and okay. so forth but these let's let's call it smaller hadath like uh, going to the toilet or breaking wind these actually uh, won't um, void the ghusl itself but if the, the one completes ghusl he must do wudu for the prayers Sheikhna what happens if I've woken up I'm in a state of janaba now I need to perform ghusl janaba I run to the shower to prepare and I make my niyyah for the ghusl and I remember, oh, it's Friday today and I did the niyyah of ghusl al-jum'ah, a mustahab ghusl, not the wajib one. Does that ghusl, it was a mistake, I didn't do it on purpose, I, I just forgot. Would that ghusl suffice and, and will that substitute for the wajib ghusl or do I have to perform the wajib ghusl, ghusl janaba again? Yeah, it, it's satisfactory, the, I mean, um, as long as you have a ghusl which is with intention, you know, Qurbat Allah Ta'ala and uh, be it for the Friday or anything else, then that is, according to the Sayyid, it satisfies and uh, will be accepted, inshallah. Although, the Sayyid said that it's mustahab precaution that he should repeat the ghusl, um, uh, which is better with the intention of, of Janaba and so forth. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's fine. Shaykhna, what happens with brothers and sisters who have quite long hair when they're performing ghusl? Do they have to wash the whole hair? Or is it just the hair that's on the head? And the water, like you said before, has to touch the, has to touch the scalp. So does it matter that the long hair and the loose ends, they don't have to touch uh, water, they don't have to be wet? Just the scalp, is this correct? Or does you have to wash the whole of the hair? Exactly. Uh, for the ghusl of Janab, uh, particularly, um, the mandatory is to make sure that the water reaches the skin and the scalp of, of the head. So that's the main thing. So if somebody has long hair, they can actually wrap it and uh, um, just to make the hair which is attached to the scalp to reach the water. So they can actually avoid reaching the water mm -hmm. to the excess of the remaining of the hair. So that's fine. Because that's the important sense. about the janaba is to make sure that the water reaches the skin and the skull uh, in the body. Sheikhna, let's move our discussion on now onto the ghusl of, of touching a dead body. What are the rules when it comes to touching the corpse of a human being? What, what ghusls must be performed? Well, if the one touches uh, the corpse, uh, the body of a dead person, a human being, of course, we talk only about the human beings, nothing to do with the animals. Um, if somebody touches uh, the body of uh, a dead person and that body has gone cold that is the condition that has gone cold and before washing with the ghusl of mayyit or the rituals of washing uh, the dead the three washes the three main washes which are wajib um, if somebody touches that dead corpse and um, it was called, then it has become wajib upon that person to perform ghusl of touching the corpse. Ghusl mas al mayt, as they say in Arabic. It becomes wajib. What about the corpse of uh, a young infant or someone who's not balugh? Um, for example, a baby that's you know, a miscarried baby or a very young child. Does that ghusl also apply to them? If that um, baby who has completed it, uh, four months and it is in the womb of that uh, woman 
who miscarried that baby um, because by the completion of the four months, the ruh comes and the soul comes to uh, this child and he begins to move inside the womb. So in this situation, uh, the touching of such uh, you know, the, the children or the, uh, the baby becomes also a wajib for the ghusl of, of touching the corpse. So by completion of four months, and likewise the children in overall, the one years old or six months and so forth, they have the same uh, hukum and rule with regard to uh, touching the corpse and doing the ghusl as a result, but with the condition of being cold. Sheikh, now what happens if, um, unfortunately, we live in a, in a very messed up world where there's suicide bombings and, and people are living in certain war zones where you will walk in the street and you will find pieces of, of people and pieces of corpses lying everywhere. Someone has to pick those up and, and clean the street. Do we have to perform ghusli mayat when we touch these? Well, again, uh, we can break this into two parts. The first part is when uh, the limbs or the parts of the body um, which were separated from a human being and they have bone so let's say a full arm a full leg for example in this situation if somebody touched them then they have to do also of touching the corpse so otherwise if that part of the body um, had no bone just a piece of flesh for example let's say just a piece of muscle, for example, and it had no bone, in this case, they don't have to do any ghusl. The ghusl comes when there's a bone within that uh, limb. Mm. So if there's no bone, just a, uh, just a flesh, piece of flesh, the, and they touch it, it, and they don't have to do any ghusl for that. That's uh, the rule for that. Shaykhna, the ghusl or ghusl made when you touch a dead body, is it performed the same way as ghusl janaba, as in pouring the water on the head, right side, then left side, is it the same method? Exactly the same, Ghusl just a different Ghusl Mayyit, uh, touching the corpse. The same thing is just the intention that I do the Ghusl of, uh, you keep this in mind that you're doing the Ghusl of, of touching the corpse. And straightforward, the same rule applies to uh, this Ghusl as it applies to other Ghusl and the Ghusl Wajib as well. So anything that invalids the Ghusl, invalids this Ghusl as well. Anything that um, the conditions or the criteria of, for example, as mentioned for the wudu, it also applies to this one, except in some issues such as this, the, um, the gap time, yes. where you can actually do just wash the head and the neck and you walk out and you yes. come back and you finish the rest parts mm -hmm. and, and so forth. So it's, it's almost the same. I mean, in terms of the ghusl, it's all one, the ghusl of wajib and mustahab, the way that you do it is all exactly the same. Thank you very much, Sheikhna, for that insightful discussion. And thank you to the viewers for joining us on this discussion of Ghusl. Inshallah, we'll be continuing our discussion on the next episode. And if you have any questions in regard to Ghusl, in regard to Khums, Zakah, Salah, any Ahkam questions, please send them to the contact details provided. And inshallah, the Sheikh will be able to address them soon. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.